Hey there, friends. I started a conversation during a live stream yesterday trying to dissect the differences between different types of shootings, different types of rampage killings, conflict killings, things of that nature. And my live stream kind of got upset at some point because I lost my audio, my fault. So I, this is too important of information. So I'm going to start a series of videos breaking down what I truly see as a logical look at different types of shootings and how we're being ignorant and stupid and lazy if we approach every single type of killing and shooting the exact same way, especially if we lump them all into one bucket. Now, side note here, I am writing a second book and it is on this very topic. So I'm knee deep in a bunch of this research already. So I felt like I would share a lot of this with you guys. I can't put it all into one video because it's way too much information. It will bore you guys to tears. But I feel like this is a good starting point. Why does the media hang on that term mass shooting? We hear it all the time. And most of you are like me. You take one click to go look at the story that says mass shooting in this area. You see what it really is. You see that it's a conflict issue, not an actual rampage issue. There is a difference. I'll get more on that in another video and you immediately click off of it. Why do they hang on the mass shooting? They hang on it because that's why you clicked on it in the first place. You clicked on that headline because you were sucked into it. Because mass shooting is something that is unnerving to people. And why do I say that? A true, if you want to call it mass shooting, the kind that people should panic about. I'm talking about people like you and I. The people that should be worried about the types of shootings I'm talking about is a rampage killing. A rampage killing is something that is unpredictable. It's unprovoked. It is somebody hell-bent on accumulating a large body count. They have something wrong with them. That's all their intent on doing is killing as many people as possible. What they also want to do is attract as much attention as they possibly can. They are usually going to commit these crimes during high traffic areas when there's a lot of people around, a lot of eyeballs around. What they're not going to do is go into the projects and commit these types of murders. That's just not where they happen. The reason why mass shooting is such a desirable word to the media is because the media has done such a bad job as far as credibility, nobody believes them anymore, that they're losing eyeballs. They can't sell newspapers anymore. No one watches TV anymore. People are getting most of their content just like you are. They're getting it online. So now that inability to trust the media has spread over to the internet. Now you look at things on the internet and you don't believe these people. So they're getting paid every time you click on a page where an ad pops up, right? They don't want to tell you with a headline that this was another conflict shooting or even let's call it what it is in many cases, a gang shooting. If they ran a headline that said 10 people killed in mass shooting in Georgia, you'd probably click on it because you're like, oh my God, you know, that could have been me. But if they run that same headline that says 10 people killed in gang shooting in Georgia, are you going to click on it? Probably not. Probably if you live in Georgia, you will, because you want to see what neighborhood this happened in. But you're, you're not putting yourself into that position because you know you wouldn't have been anywhere near there. The reason why you would have clicked on that other headline first is because you put yourself in that position. In other words, when we look at an article, let's say you you see an article where it says 10 year old boy drowns at the beach. The reason why that tugs at our heartstrings is because most of us have families, most of us have children, or we at least have nieces and nephews or whichever. We put ourselves into that shoe, in their shoes. We go, what would happen if I lost my nephew? What would happen if I lost my 10 year old? What if they had drowned? And you immediately tap into that emotion and you go, man, you know, that, that's terrible. I can't imagine that happening to me. And you hear people usually say that after they read, read those types of headlines. They click on that mass shooting headline because they're putting their self into that position. And in a lot of cases, people like you and I, we're looking to ready ourselves. We're looking to say, okay, that's another thing I need to be looking out for if I'm out in public and one of these rampage killings pops off. So we put our self into those scenarios. So when we see a shooting happen at a church, at a school, um, at a mall. Well, those are places that we go. So we're like, man, would I have seen that coming? You know, you really start going through your mind, placing yourself where that happened. If it's a gang shooting at 2 a.m. on a street corner by a liquor store in the bad part of town, when you click on that article, you know damn well you wouldn't have been there, right? 
geography. You would not have been there. And you know damn well you would not have been there at 2 o'clock in the morning, right? So you immediately remove yourself from any kind of hypothetical situation that would have included you. So it's not frightening to you. A gang shooting is not frightening to most of us. And I'm going to call it a conflict shooting because not all conflict shootings are gang related. Sometimes it's just people that have booze, dope, or women involved and they get mad at each other and there's an altercation. Somebody gets provoked, they pull a gun and they shoot somebody. They're not all gang related. Let's be very clear about that. But using gang shootings as a good topic, your average gun owner, your average American knows that they're not going to be at downtown gangland city at two o'clock in the morning. So that type of shooting is not scary to them because they'll know they'll never be there and they'll never be there at that time. So even if you have a shooting, quote, mass shooting at 3 p.m. downtown Chicago, south side of Chicago, everybody looks at that and goes, eh, another shooting in Chicago. It doesn't phase you because your family's not in any danger because your family will never be on the south side of Chicago unless you live there. I will never purposely go there. Using the term mass shooting with a headline is kind of like when summer rolls around and you hear the headline that says somebody was attacked by a shark at a beach, you immediately go, oh, because it's unpredictable. You wouldn't have seen it coming. The person rarely will see a shark coming. And it's at a place where a lot of people are going during the summer, a beach, right? It's a normal place to be for the summer. So when you know there's sharks in the water, you immediately are on your toes. That's a sensational story. That's something that you want to read about because you might be going to that same beach. Same goes for the mass shooting. They're using this phrase on purpose because they know it's disingenuous and dishonest, but if they use the proper phrase to describe the type of shooting that just took place, you're liable to not ever click on the story and scroll right past it. The thing about a true rampage killing, a mass shooting that's scary, is that they're unpredictable. They can happen anywhere, they can happen anytime, and they can happen from pretty much anybody. In other words, an unsuspecting person could be sitting right next to you and that's that rampage killer. A perfect example of how the media prefers to hang on to this and not do any real research or work like I'm doing to divide those things up and be honest with everybody is they want to panic everybody because again, it's selling. I pulled this article from June 13th from ABC News, it says at least 10 dead, 42 injured as wave of weekend mass shootings in U.S. continues. Now, I want you to see these mass shootings that they're talking about. I want you to look at each one of these. We're going to roll down here and you look at some of their rhetoric that they've got listed on there. Really, really, it looks tough, right? I mean, that looks like some really, really tough stuff right there. That would put the fear of God in me if each one of those were in schools, churches, or malls, right? Not so fast. Let's move on down here and look at the first one. The first one, seven shot, three fatally at Los Angeles warehouse party. Well, guess what? That is a conflict shooting. That is not your prototypical mass shooting. That is not the implied mass shooting that the media is implying that would get you to click on the story to make you feel unsafe, thinking that you could have been in that situation. Most of you would have never said, I'm going to this party. So most of you would have never been in any danger. So this is not a sensational story to you because it would never apply to you. The next one, same thing. Indiana nightclub shooting leaves two dead, four injured. We're going to keep scrolling. Four injured in New Orleans street shooting. Yep, not going on down to a New Orleans street. I love Louisiana. I live in Louisiana. New Orleans is the armpit of our state. Not going down there. Denver party shooting leaves two dead, four injured. Oh, another party. Scroll down, five teenagers shot near Louisville Bridge. Yep, hanging out at the bridge. Something pops off, somebody pulls out a gun, shoots, boom. I would have never been there. Seven injured in shooting at suburban Atlanta house party. Guess what? I wouldn't have been there either. Four shot, two fatally at Tennessee pool party. Another party. People got drunk, dope gets slung around, girls are around there, people start arguing, boom, shoot at each other. Five injured in Chicago drive-by shooting. This one was a little bit different because it happened at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, but it is Chicago. Chicago never sleeps when it comes to putting bodies six feet under. Four shot at Detroit bachelor party. Uh-oh, something popped off there. Dope, booze, chicks. One killed, three injured in Georgia, restaurant shooting. 48-year-old man was killed and other men were injured when a shooting broke out in a restaurant in Decatur, Georgia. Same thing, something popped off. Guys, my point in all this is that the media 
is purposely trying to suck you in. I'm going to be putting together another video that will take us to the next step. A pretty detailed look at breaking down these types of mass shootings into what are the true categories. What's the purpose of breaking them down into categories? Well, how do you resolve it? If nobody's breaking them down and are putting them all into the same bucket, like I used in the analogy yesterday, if everybody brings their car into the mechanic shop and the mechanic has one thing that he tries to do to fix every car, regardless of what the symptoms of the car not working are, that's just stupid. It's just, I don't know any other way to describe that. There is no one size fits all. There's no one thing that fixes everything. So if you're not trying to break up these shootings to determine what the true cause is, because we know it's not the guns. So if we're not trying to find what the intent was that made things either pop off or make this person go off, then we're not truly trying to research and find what the true root causes are. I care. I care for my fellow man and my brothers and sisters out there. I want these things to stop. I don't care what kind of shooting it is. I want them to stop. I've been working feverishly for years now to figure out the difference in all this. And guess who won't listen to me? Politicians won't listen to me and the media will not listen to me. You tell me who's got money to be made by people getting killed. You tell me who's happy with the body count that we have out there. These people are doing no real research to try to figure out what the true reasons are. I am one of the most average educated people that you will ever meet or below. And if I can do it, most people can do it. There's a lot of people that are a lot smarter than me that are not trying to determine what these differences are. But I'll be putting out a video that'll talk about conflict killers, rampage killers, domestic killers. Those things right there, we break those up. Just those three alone are all approached at a totally different way. And if you try to fix them all the same way and approach them all the same way as far as a resolution, that's no more different and no less stupid than bringing a vehicle into a mechanic shop and he automatically changes your tires and replaces your spark plugs because you're out of windshield wiper fluid. God save the queen, man. I'm sorry, I thought this was America.